So as we continue our look at the human heart, we're going to entitle the next flowchart Human Heart 3. And what we'll be talking about in this flowchart is the idea of the heartbeat and how it works. This is summarized in figure 42.8. So let's take a look now at what a heartbeat is and how it functions, how it's initiated and propagated throughout the heart. This is going to primarily be controlled initially by a, via the SA node. So the SA node is otherwise known as the pacemaker of the heart. This is commonly referred to as the SA node but stands for the sinoatrial node. And as the pacemaker, it's going to allow the heart to have a specific pace, a specific uh, rate of a heartbeat that's going to be correct and functional throughout the body as we go through the heartbeat. So what we want to do at the SA node is the following as a pacemaker of the heart. We want to take a look at the fact that we have this mass of cardiac muscle. So we have a mass of cardiac muscle that's specifically going to be at the right atrium. That cardiac muscle will serve as the SA node initially. And its job is the following. It will auto rhythmically, so it will auto rhythmically, that's a perfect term to use here, initiate each heartbeat. So every time the heart beats, it's going to be done on its own without you having to tell the heart to beat. It does it on its own. That's why we state auto rhythmically. But not only is it done on its own, it's done in a very specific rhythm. So auto rhythmic initiation of the heartbeat is done via this mass of cardiac muscle known as the SA node, otherwise known as the pacemaker. How is this done? How do we auto rhythmically initiate each heartbeat? This is going to be done because of the fact that the heart is able to generate action potentials on its own. When you have autorhythmicity within the heart, this directly relates to the fact that you have action potentials propagating on their own, independent of, let's say, a nervous influence. Nonetheless, when you have action potentials occurring uh, on their own, this is going to result in the following neural sort of result. This is going to trigger some calcium channels. So we'll have some calcium channels that are going to open. When you have calcium channel opening, this is going to, of course, result in depolarization. Because, again, calcium channels are going to allow calcium ions, which are positive ions, to come into the cell, causing the cell to become more positive. Becoming more positive, otherwise known as depolarization, is the direct result of an influx of positive ions. And once you have an influx of these calcium positive ions, you will eventually get to the point where you reach threshold and establish and create an action potential. But the key here is that the action potential, though it starts at the SA node, has to propagate throughout the rest of the heart. And that's going to be seen as we move forward through this specific heartbeat. This is just the beginning of the heartbeat at the SA node. Now, before we get into the next steps of this heartbeat, what we want to sort of highlight is the fact that this pacemaker, the SA node, actually can be replaced by what many people have heard of, an artificial pacemaker. Artificial pacemakers are capable of doing the same function as the SA node, and that's why they are placed exactly where the SA node would be, let's say, if it was functioning correctly. If it's not functioning correctly, you put an artificial pace, pacemaker there, and it replaces the SA node and does exactly the same job as highlighted here. So once we have this action potential, the next job is to make sure that this action potential propagates throughout the heart. And in order to do that, what we're going to notice is the following. The SA node, that impulse that's been generated autorhythmically, that action potential in the form of an impulse, spreads rapidly through the atrial walls. Spreads rapidly throughout the atrial walls because that's the exact area that we're at right now because this is the SA node, sinoatrial node. But what we have to do, the reason for the spreading of this atrial uh, impulse is that this is going to result and tell the atria to do a muscular function and that is contract. That's the message that's received 
because of this atrial impulse being spread throughout this structure of the heart. So we have the atria contract. Again, the heartbeat is done in order, is, is a culminative, cumulative effort between the atria and the ventricle to both contract at the correct time. That's the key here. We have to make sure that they contract at the correct time. Right now, it's only the atria's job to contract because it's gotten a message from the SA node impulse to contract. Now, once it contracts, what's the next step? Well, during contraction, during an atrial contraction, what we see is that the impulse itself not only propagates and causes the atria to contract, but that impulse moves from the SA node to what is now the AV node. And the AV node is known as the atrioventricular node. This is right in between the right atria and the right ventricle. Look again where we started. We started at the right atrium, at the SA node, propagated throughout the atria, caused the atria to contract. During that contraction, we're moving this message from the SA node simultaneously to the AV node. At the AV node, we have a very important event occur that really makes sure that the heartbeat is efficient and successful. At the AV node, we get what is known as a purposeful, a deliberate delay of the impulse. The actual message that's telling the heart to contract is stopped. It's delayed at this structure, AV node, for about one-tenth of a second. This may seem initially as something bad. Why would you want to stop a message that's trying to tell you, trying to tell the heart to beat? This is something that is critical for life to, you know, go on. The heart has to beat. Why would you stop the message for any amount of time? And this is, again, I stated a purposeful delay. And the reason being the following. Because you have a delay at the AV node for just this one-tenth of a second, you're going to prevent a couple of different things. This prevents all four chambers, prevents all four chambers from squeezing at once, from contracting at once. This is, this would be bad because what you have, if you have all four chambers squeezing for, at once, is the following. When you have an AV node delay, this allows the atria, which are the initial parts that are contracting due to this impulse that's propagating, it allows the atria to complete their contraction, to do a whole contraction entirely. So to complete that contraction entirely needs to be done 100% before the actual ventricles do their contraction. When you do this, when you purposefully delay and allow the atria to complete their contraction before the ventricles contract, what you're doing here is essentially allowing the ventricles themselves, this overall allows the ventricles to fill completely with blood, as much blood as they possibly can fill with. Because a complete atrial contraction means a complete flow of blood to the ventricles, which allows the ventricles to fill up completely in order to ensure the most amount of blood can be pumped away from the heart via these ventricles. That's the job of the heart is to essentially pump blood away from itself to the rest of the body. And that can only happen if you have this successful filling and uh, pumping of blood that's very purposefully delayed at this AV node for just this moment right here, one-tenth of a second, to ensure that the ventricles are completely filled with blood and not on, to ensure that all the chambers aren't just completely squeezing all at once to make sure overall that you have a successful heartbeat. So this purposeful delay, after it has been initiated and done, you're going to then get the rest of the heartbeat. And the rest of the heartbeat is going to propagate via a couple of different specialized structures of the heart. Those structures will include the following. Once you have the delay and it's completed, there are going to be these structures known as bundle branches. Very specialized parts of the heart are going to conduct, they're going to continue moving this signal, because we haven't completed a heartbeat yet, continue to move the signal from the AV node. That's where we're at. We had a delay there. Now we're going to move it from the AV node to what is known as the heart apex. The heart apex is just the very, very sort of uh, bottom part of the heart. This is going to be 
where we're going to have the next sort of message and movement of this impulse. So once we have this reach the lowest part of the heart, known as the heart apex, that signal will continue to move. That signal will state the signal continues to spread throughout the rest of the heart via Purkinje fibers. So these Purkinje fibers are going to make sure that the signal is propagated even further throughout the rest of the heart, eventually allowing the signal to reach, the con to, to reach those ventricles that were filling up with blood for that one-tenth of a second. And then once those ventricles have been filled up, they will contract and push blood away from the heart to the rest of the body via the systemic circuit. So overall, take a look at this stepwise association that we have of the heartbeat starting at the SA node. Be sure to understand each step and the purpose of each step, why we have a delay, why we have filling, when we have filling, when we have pumping, contraction, etc. This is nicely shown in figure 48, 42.8. And be sure to also look at the playlist section of the website where we show this process within an actual 3D animation form of the heart. In the next video, what we'll be focusing on and concluding our look at the heart of the human is the regulation of the human heart.